How does the Victrix BFG Pro compare to the B Savior controller? We're gonna find out. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. You've probably already seen my other controller showdown videos where we compare the Victrix to the DualSense Edge. We compare the DualSense Edge to the B-Savior and today we are going to compare the Victrix BFG Pro controller to the B-Savior controller. Now at first glance, you're looking over here, you're like, holy crap, there's a lot of kit here for your money and the B-Savior looks pretty darn simple and basic. So obviously, the Victrix is the best controller. Let's end the video and move on. But I don't think it's quite that easy. So we're gonna break down the features. We're gonna talk about each one. I've used both controllers quite extensively. I have hands-on information. This is not me watching some video of some guy. I have the controller right here, as you can see, I have both of them. I've tested both of them. I have an opinion about both of them. Maybe it's not a popular opinion, but what I can tell you is this video is sponsored by me. It's sponsored by me. So Victrix did not send me this controller and say, Anton, say some nice things about this controller for us. They don't even know I exist, actually, if I'm being quite honest. I bought this controller with my own money. Now. Full disclosure, B Savior did send me this controller. I've done reviews on it. I've paid my dues. I've said nice things about the controller. I no longer have any obligation to say nice things about them. And I know now you're saying, aha, Anton, in other videos, you said some really nice things about the B Savior controller. Are you telling me that you were not being honest? Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. No, actually, that's not what I'm telling you. I retain the right to speak my mind for any products that I do videos on. Now that could change. If, a, if somebody wants to pay me a million dollars to say nice things about their product, I will. So my commitment to you guys is, until somebody pays me a million dollars to say nice things about their product, you're gonna get the real truth what I think about the product. If someone pays me a million dollars, I'll tell you. I'll say, this video, I've been paid a million dollars to say nice things and here's all the really nice things that they told me to say. So this video is totally off the cuff. I don't even have a script, as you can tell, because I'm already rambling, but let's get into it. So first off, let's talk about build quality and fit and finish. So we'll start with the B Savior. The B Savior starts life as a PlayStation 5 controller. So the fit and finish of the controller is exactly what you would expect on any PlayStation 5 controller. It's pretty good. The back paddles on the controller are not Sony supplied so uh, the B Savior team made this themselves but it's actually also really good the buttons are in the stock form they're a little bit high for my liking now this is adjustable you can open this up and there's little screws on the back and actually so I actually have a B Savior back button mod kit so that you can install it on your own PlayStation controller I already installed it on a controller this is an extra one that I just haven't gotten around to installing it but the back buttons are slightly adjustable. You can open this backpack and there's a little screw you can turn that makes them a little bit softer, but they actually move further away, not closer. So my concern about spacing would not be resolved by adjusting these. So if you have the B Saver controller already and you're like, wow, Anton said I can adjust the, the back buttons. Don't waste your time. It's not really worth it, okay? I don't want you wrecking something trying to to tinker a little bit, okay? So that's all I have to say about that. So overall though, like the back shell is, is high quality. It feels good. It's a PlayStation controller. Of course it should feel good. Now let's look at the Victrix BFG Pro. It is obviously a unique design. It is their own shell. It is their own guts inside there. It is all their own. It is very much third party. And this is one of the first true third party controllers. So when we talk about build quality though, it feels cheap. It feels like cheap plastics. 
it feels really light. There's features that are missing from here. So most notably, it does not have adaptive triggers. It does not have haptic feedback and it's still a premium price. So price to price, this is $169. This is $179 US dollars. So they're about the same price, but fit and finish of this guy is just not as good as a PlayStation controller that's been modded. You're just not gonna beat that. So I'm gonna give fit and finish and build to the B Savior controller. It's better in that respect. Next, let's talk about features. Okay, so we'll go to the Victrix first. So it has four back buttons. It has adjustable thumbsticks, so it's got the full range of motion, or I can go like this and release that, and then it engages a trigger stop, which is great for your first person shooter lovers out there. It has adjustable height thumbsticks, so I can take those off. I can put different height ones on. It also has, now I don't wanna talk about the modular, modularity, modularity, the uh, modular features of the controller, because that's gonna be separate, okay? So forget about what's over here for now, and let's just talk about the controller as a controller. It has three programmable user profiles, and it has the ability to work, there's a little switch right here, which allows you to use it on your PC, your PlayStation 4, and your PlayStation 5, wirelessly or wired. We're gonna put a little asterisk next to that because to use it wirelessly, you actually need this little dongle here. And to use it wired, obviously you use a USB cord. Now talking about features, one thing that we should note is the triggers on here, the analog triggers are highly sensitive. So when I'm holding the controller, if you are a person who tends to rest your index fingers or these fingers, on your the triggers you are going to accidentally bump them a lot i found myself playing call of duty where i was aiming down sights for no real good reason a lot and i was also shooting for no good reason a lot where I'd just fire off one round because my finger just accidentally bumped it with the way the back buttons are on here i find i need to to actually the need to pull on these triggers to get the grip I need to, to do the back buttons. So I find like I just, I'm floating the controller too much to activate it. So it, the features are there, but using the features does, definitely takes some learning. Now the B Savior controller also has four back buttons. They are fully programmable and they are mappable to pretty much any face button. There's no adjustable trigger stops. So you have the adaptive triggers that your regular PlayStation controller has. So you can have a fake trigger stop, but they are full throw triggers and there's no way around that. I have in a different video shown you some little stickers that you can put on here that make it so that they are, there is a bit of a trigger stop, but those are either on or off. You're not gonna swap them all the time. So looking at base controller, that feature does not exist. Also, there's no adjustable height thumbsticks, so you have just the standard height thumbsticks. Again, it's a bit of a drawback for the person who's probably looking for back buttons, is probably doing competitive first-person shooting or something like that, and these are a miss. They're, they're definitely a miss. So when we're talking about feature for feature, the Victrix BFG Pro is probably the controller you're looking for just for the ability to tune it and tweak it. The back buttons are the same amount and it's the controller for you in that respect. Now we're gonna venture out a little bit into two categories that neither controller supports on the other. So first one would be the modular features of the Victrix Pro. Now I've shown you in different videos, so I'm not gonna go through it here, but these two modules actually are removable. This one can be removed, swapped around and stuck back in. The box here actually shows the other configuration which sets it more like an Xbox or a Switch controller, which a lot of people prefer. So you can do that here or you can set it in this configuration, which is what I prefer. You also have this other guy right here. Now this is the fight stick adapter. It has micro buttons on here, so they're like mouse click buttons, and it would replace this module right here, which allows you to use it with all of your fighting games. So if you've got Street Fighter, you've got Mortal Kombat, games like that, if you play those kind of games and you don't want to have all your money tied up in just one controller, you could buy this controller and it would do your fighting games, it would do your first person shooter games, 
and it will kind of do your everything else games. What it does not do very well is what I call an experiential game. Now, an experiential game would be a game that has a story, it has missions, it has features and functionality that tries to immerse you into the experience. Now, some of the tricks that Sony's used to create more of an experience is to create that adaptive triggers, to incorporate the haptic feedback, to create those little nuances to help really sell that experience. This controller does not have any of those. So if you are somebody who finds yourself playing experiential games a lot, this is not your controller. Straight up, it is not. This is for the tournament player, the guy who's playing Call of Duty and needs that competitive edge. This is your controller. The guy who's playing Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, this is your controller. The guy who's playing Call of Duty kind of casually, but wants to have a little bit of an advantage, but also wants to play a racing game with the adaptive triggers or an experiential game with the haptic feedback and the adaptive triggers, this is your controller. Straight up, this is your controller. So, when we talk about modularity, the Victrix Pro, it's got it down. But, the B Savior has another trick up its sleeves. You see on the back here, there's this little backpack. I'm gonna call it a backpack. And inside that backpack, you see there's a little USB port right there. That little USB port unlocks a whole new world of features. And what that means is, if I already have my favorite controller and I have it from a different generation console, for example, my PlayStation 4 controller is actually my favorite controller or maybe you have a scuff PS4 controller, or maybe you have a PS4 Fight Commander that's your favorite controller, or maybe you love Xbox, but you like the PlayStation exclusives and you're used to your Xbox controller, or maybe you're somebody who suffers with disabilities and you need some way to just still game and you need a way to connect weird controller configurations and you count on a device such as this, a Cronus Zen, to play those games. Well, guess what? Utilizing this backpack on here, you can actually connect any of these devices to your PlayStation 5 through this controller. So this controller becomes a gateway. It unlocks the ability to connect these devices and more, a switch controller, keyboard and mouse, all of those are supported through that backpack module, which no other controller on the market supports. So this guy does not support that. So if you already have your favorite controller and you want to just keep using it, but you've now got a, a next gen console, you've got a PlayStation 5, and you just wish you could use your favorite controller, this would unlock that feature. Now I know it's, it's expensive. It's $170 for the ability to use your old controller, but this will never wear out, it'll always work, and that old controller is getting cheaper and cheaper because it's old technology, it's last gen technology. So you can get some, some breathe some new life into your new console with your old controller or your old controller with your new console, however you wanna say that. And that's, it's an amazing feature. Now the B-Savior does actually have some other features. It records macros, it records multiple controller combinations. So again, with your Street Fighter games, you can cheat if that's your thing. You won't be tournament legal with this thing, but you can record button combos so that you just have to push one button and you can do your top secret move every single time perfectly. It's a super hack. Like you shouldn't do that if you're trying to play in competition. This is still your controller but this does have the ability to make you play a little bit better if you're willing to kinda work in a gray area or just straight up cheat. So overall, it comes down to a question though, like which one at the end of the day can I recommend, okay? This one clearly has some really, really great features. It has some great functionality, but for me, the drawbacks on here are too great. The fact that those triggers are way too sensitive, there's no way to dial it down. 
that's a that's a hard one for me to get used to the fact that the grip on this really only supports having your your index fingers as triggers if you try to hold it like this there's no way you can hold it like this and still activate your back buttons there which a lot of people do actually have that grip so you would you're forced to use a very specific grip with this controller. There's a steep learning curve to using it because it's so different from any other controller that you've used, which they're all game changers. I don't like, I don't like the dongle to, to get wireless connectivity. I want just regular Bluetooth connectivity. There's so many downsides to this controller. The price, it's more money than this one. And at the end of the day, my daily driver is actually a modified B Savior. So I have a different B Savior, the, the DIY kit that I installed clicky triggers on and I installed adjustable height thumbsticks and that is my controller. That's, the, that's my go-to controller that I use every single day. And this controller, when this video series is done, is getting boxed up and shipped back where it came from. I just can't recommend that you buy this controller. It's such a specific person that wants it. And if you're watching this video and you're that specific person, congratulations, this controller is for you, but it's very polarizing. It's either for you or it's not, and it is not for me. I'm sorry to the guys who like it, but it's not for me. So out of these two controllers, I'm taking the B Savior every time. It's cheaper. It's better, it feels better, it has better implementation of the features that are there, it just works better. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.